Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before diesel. This one's how to fix soot in a turbo diesel. There you go, that filth. Okay, so we've talked about it before. We've talked about it lots and lots and lots. And there's a few different solutions. We're gonna go through a few of those, what do work and what don't work. This isn't really about cleaning it. Uh, we could probably do another video separately on cleaning it, what we, how we clean it. We've probably done that before. So, you know, like I always say, you kind of need to go back um, go back into all our old information because we've been putting the information out for years so if you have a look at this right starting from the top there the Facebook pages right the Facebook page is the Prada Hospital right that's to help people with their own servicing information to look after their vehicles the Prada Hospital this is where we are we're in the Prada Hospital right we fix Prados. More to the point, we do preventive maintenance on Prados, so we don't have to fix them, because we prefer to look after them than fix them. Prado highlights 1KD FTV injectors. It's all your information related around injectors, you know, any sort of information around injectors. Um, and then you've got your groups, depending what, you know, what vehicle and what information, if you just want to talk engine or particular engines, you know what I mean? So they're your groups, check those out. And do your research. Get in there and search. Search EJR cleaning. How to fix it. What's the solution? You know, there's a lot of all that old information there, and I've been doing it for years, and I can't put all of that into this video. I'm going to put into this video, I suppose, the latest, most up-to-date information. That's a good thing about new videos. If there's any slight updates, anything changes, you're going to get those updates. Um, so, I suppose we're talking about diesel turbos in general because it's a similar. You know, I don't want to say the same, but it's basically the same problem in all these turbo diesels because you've got that, you know, the, the crankcase ventilation system, the PCV system, whatever you want to call it, which puts a small amount of oil in the intake more as the vehicle gets older. And early days, there's not much. It's probably, you know, so minimal, it's not funny. It's going to be just dry and powdery and it's not going to stick. And then it's going to become a bit more. And that's probably when it's the worst of it. And then as the vehicle gets older, more again and then the oil's almost like washing it through so it depends how much you've got caked on if it's like that it's obviously not going to sort of wash through or stay clean so i just want to make it clear the only way to clean these properly is to disassemble and physically clean the parts okay now quite commonly these little i'll just pull one of these little red caps right these are the lids off you know degreaser cans and stuff like that quite commonly we get three caps full of those overflowing actually you have three caps overflowing in a box we're cleaning it over a box um, out of just out of like in the 1kd for example we use this as an example they're not a bad vehicle they're awesome they're the best but we choose to work on the best because that's how we roll we're not going to you know we don't need to work on rubbish cars that's another video but just in the elbow section and you know what i'm talking about what we call the e valve on the elbow we've been able to get over three cups out of that in some cases in some cars so it's a lot of stuff you can't put this through a i suppose we've got to go back to basics and do a video on how an engine works for a lot of people but you can't compress solids you can't even compress a bit of water well you can't well, you can compress it can't you yeah can you you can compress it yeah but it won't compress some things will compress some won't but there's no room in the engine for these things to happen okay you can compress air and um, but not these solid things you can't have this gear washed through with any sorts of fluids or itself none of those are going to it'd have to be such a tiny amount it'd have to clean out over a few weeks or a few months if you know what i mean you couldn't just you can't do it in you can't wash that through an engine in an hour you know it just it's not going to work so it might look good if you get one of these fancy machines hooked up to your car and it blows all this smoke because by putting things into the intake it's going to go through and it's going to take some of it enough to make a big mess out the tailpipe and I think then you'd probably think in your own mind that it runs better it may have an effect that makes it feel like it runs better but it just physically needs to be cleaned okay now how to fix the soot in your how to fix the soot in a diesel turbo well the way to fix it is to not have the EJR system right and to not have that black soot to not have exhaust Gas is going back into your intake. That's one way, to, that's to put it simple, that's how to fix it. So whether it's however you get rid of your EGR system or you have it shut off electronically or you put a blanking plate in like that. I'm just using these as examples, you know. These are maybe some of the ones that work on some of the Toyotas. There's some different options, we'll get to that. But, you know, you can put a full blank in there and then that solves your problem, but you may have an engine light. So 
that's where you can get in the do in the ECU and make some adjustments so that you don't get that engine light, right? So basically that's something some people put this plate in with a um, hole in it you know there's been a lot of different R&D um, we know people that have tried five mil holes six mil holes and we've worked out that the seven mil hole is the one that works okay definitely that's the balance in a 1k DFTV what works now we'll just quickly give you an example of how well it works this is a standard EJ this is just some old photos been sitting around for years and I thought well the problem is when I've got a minute to make a video, I haven't always got a vehicle there pulled apart. When, the, when I'm working on the vehicle, quite often, we're doing the work. We need to concentrate on that. We're getting the work done. You know what I mean? We can't always make videos on vehicles. It's at the end of the day and that vehicle goes and you go, geez, you know, I wish I could have made a video on that or explain a bit more information on that. And then it's like, well, so what are we going to put in the picture? So then we get the old photos out, right? So I could probably get some fresh ones. Um, if you look at our other videos, of course you'll see, you know, videos of this sort of problem and demonstrating, you know, I think there was one recently I released called, um, this is what your intake system looks like, you know, based on averages. You know, get me wrong, some of them look a lot better than that. So that's, you know, one vehicle and this is another vehicle and you could say that's quite bad, but it doesn't matter how bad or how good it looks, the same mess is going through your engine, okay? It's not good for your engine. So... How well does this plate work? Well, from what we've seen, we've seen a lot of vehicles with it in. Obviously, that's dirty. This picture here, can you see that? You can see that, all right? Okay, so that's obviously clean, right? That's clean, so clean like brand new. And if you had no EGR flow whatsoever, it would basically stay that way, okay? Or well, pretty well, you know, there's nothing black. All you're gonna have is, a, you're gonna get a light amount of oil. It's very light. You don't need to stop the oil. You don't need the catch can. A catch can, is not a solution for this problem. It's not really a solution for any problem. So we're not gonna talk about it because we're not gonna talk about things that don't work that are a waste of money, right? We're gonna talk about things that do work and the real problem. Exhaust gas recirculation is the problem. Now, this plate, when placed on an engine that's had an intake clean that looks like this, the results end up, doesn't matter if it's five, 10, 20, 30, 50, or 100,000 Ks. I don't know if you can see that. This is just a couple of examples. We've got some more up on the wall, but we're not gonna we're not gonna get into it too much. And no, that one. So that's what it'll look like. So you'll see a very light coating. You can see it's still alloy in colour, right? So it's beautiful as far as that goes. You're gonna see a few specs, whatever. Um, if you like, you can use, you know, once a year or something before you do an oil change, you can use an intake cleaner or something, you know, sorts of products like this. Not when it's like that. So not when it's like that. But when it's like this, if you've got a system like that and you just want to give it a bit of a polish up once a year, you can do that. I don't mind you doing that. But some of it does blow past the rings and contaminate the oil. So do it before the oil change, right? So you get it, you know, you set day morning, you go for a drive, you get the paper, you come back, you have a cup of coffee. I don't know, different for everyone, but you know, that's not what I do, but I'm just putting it out there. Come back, switch the engine off, have your coffee, read the paper, then you go out and you know what, it's all warm, you know, you warmed it up and you... With this system, with a system like this, I'm not telling you how to use it. Read the can, do what the can says, I guess. But this is just an old can we've got sitting there. It's still got plenty in it. It's not something we regularly use. We don't even use it on our vehicles. But that being said, I might go and use up what we've got here on one of our vehicles or whatever just to get rid of it. Um, I'm happy with the vehicle running and looking like that. That's just fine, right? That's just hunky dory. And we know that the EJR system still works. You still it only takes a very small amount of inert gases to cool the combustion, which is what reduces nitrogen oxides, okay? With this hole, at idle, you still get 20% EGR flow. It's better than 50%, okay? Doesn't matter what percentage it is. This is the result of it, okay? The intake stays clean. You don't get a build-up. The system still works. Now, I'm not going to tell you whether it's legal or not. I'm going to tell you that that's the results. I can read the readings and tell you 20% EGR flow. We know for a fact that it only takes a very small amount of inert gases to cool the combustion. Okay, so technically it should be legal, but I don't make the rules and I'm not a lawyer and I'm not going to interpret those. So if you're worried about that, you need to work that out yourself. I'll just tell you what works and what doesn't work. Okay, this is how to fix soot in a turbo diesel. Okay, I'm telling you how to fix it. The way to fix it is to get rid of it because it's not a good thing. But by shutting them off electronically or using a full blank, would be illegal. Now, we don't think anybody's checking. Most people don't care. 
And if you want to justify it to yourself, okay, by making the engine run to, to let's call it, it's kind of like damaging the combustion by adding those. So we know the engine's more efficient, runs cleaner with an air filter, right? You know, the air filter and the cold air coming through the intercooler. We know that works better because that's why it's put there, okay? Um, when you are going up a hill or you're towing and the more you put your foot down, your e-jar valve closed, so there's no e-jar flow then anyway. That's when the engine makes maximum power, okay? So we know that works best. By having this system and those hot gases, it may reduce nitrogen oxide, and I'll say may. I'm not going to argue about whether it works or not at the moment, but you know, in my opinion, anyway, let's not go there. Um, but if you're going to do that and reduce nitrogen oxides, it increases every other emission, you know, carbon monoxide, whatever, right? You go through it, which is, you know, that's, that's your, that's your uh, you know, greenhouse gases, you know, climate change, right? So nitrogen oxide, that's the health of us. That's, you know, so if you, if you want to keep us healthy, then you don't want this in the air. Don't drive diesels, don't buy diesels. That looks after people, okay? Uh, believe your EGR system standard. If you believe the engine's gonna, depends what your belief is, you know? Um, because is this gonna damage the engine over time? That's a question for you to answer. I'll look in the comments for the answers to that one. Is that gonna damage the engine over time? Or is it not, you know? Not how much, it's a yes or no, right? Now, to answer some other questions, oh, but isn't that hole, you know, why have I got a P0400? Is it because that hole's blocked up? No, the hole doesn't block up. There it is there. That's one that came out of a vehicle, right? It can't block up, all right? I'll tell you why it can't block up. It goes at the start of the EGR cooler at the head end, right? There's no oil there. Remember, the oil is what makes it stick. If there's no, see, it's all wet here, right? That's what makes the soot stick, the oil. Now, this engine's very old. This was a like 300,000 K engine. So over time this built up, built up, built up, and then it got to 300,000, you've got all that oil we're talking about going through the middle. That's why it's wet there. It was never that wet here. If it's that wet, it would never have stuck because the oil, this perimeter here would be so wet, it's washing the soot through. And that's why the plate works so well. So there's still a fair bit of EGR flow, okay? But there's enough oil there kind of like to keep it moving and keep it lubricated. So instead of going through dry and abrasive, so this is 1KD specific, this information we're talking about just here for a moment. That's why that plate works. Now this is the plate from the 1GD FTV, right? It goes in a different place, it's a different size pipe, it's a different size plate, a different size hole. That's a 13mm hole. I'm not going to tell you whether it works or not. I know a number of vehicles that have got this plate fitted um, without any issues, without any engine lights. Is it going to help keep the intake clean? Is it going to make it worse? I don't know the answer to that question because it's early days. These vehicles, these engines have only been in Australia for four or five years. A lot of them, you know, some of them are out of warranty. You know, they're not all in our area. We don't get to see them. And generally, we're busy with 1KDs working on those, specialising in those. So we're trying to steer away from any other vehicles, including the 1GD. However, for the right people, for you awesome people, we're obviously going to do a service. If you want us to do a service, things like this, we're not going to get busy doing 1GDs. Eventually people are going to want to have a look and you know, they're going to need injectors as well I don't think they're bulletproof. They're going to need work, you know, eventually they're going to need timing chains and guides and lifters You know, the hydraulic lifters are going to fail and they're going to need replacement The engines are going to need work just like any other engine. So I don't think this new engine's great It's all just another engine. There's improvements. There's always positives and negatives. There's pitfalls, you know, so You know, we'll, we'll get to that maybe you know, but the main thing we're working on is building the network so that we've got quality repairers we can recommend that you take the vehicles to. So the other day, for example, Simon, I know you're probably watching, um, I referred Simon to one of our 4 Before Diesel um, network partners um, to another workshop who they don't particularly specialise in any particular vehicle. They do quite a lot of 1KDs and Prado Hilux type stuff, but that's not all they do, okay? So I can't do everything. My job is to build the network at the moment. That's one of the, the main jobs because there's a lot more vehicles out there and a lot more problems and there are people that can work on them and get the work done right. So that's what we're doing. Um, so as I've said before, um, if you think that, you know, you, you're doing good work and you know how to do clean, patient, um, you know how to do the right work 
and people and you want to do it for people that understand that you get what you pay for and people understand they've got to pay more to get the right work done you pay peanuts you get monkeys if the hourly rates low the guys are getting paid low money you're not going to get keep the right people for that right it's as simple as that you've got to pay the big money to keep pay them good money to keep the right people to get the right work done that's how it works simple as that okay simple mathematics if you like so how to fix the soot in a turbo diesel? Yeah, well, that's how to fix it, right? You need to get rid of it. It's the only way to fix it. Let me just think about that. Is there any other way to fix it? No. There's ways to, you know, band-aid fix, hide the problem, pretend you've fixed it. Um, fix it. There's ways to clean it. That's not fixing it. How to fix it is to get rid of the EGR, which we've said. Electronic modules. So people have been asking about these modules, you know, module for this, module for that. I've got no idea, I've never used one, okay? I know that they'll cost money. I know they're probably made in China. Um, I know that they may or may not be reliable. Who knows, it's another electronic item you gotta plug in and have hanging around somewhere. Is it gonna be waterproof? I don't know. There's a couple of different makes and models. Some of them look like homemade jobbies, whatever. Some look a bit more professional. Would I want any of this thing hanging around on my vehicle? No, thanks. You know me, I like to keep it simple and reliable. I just got to say, on a 1KD, this is simple and reliable. On a 1GD, this is simple and reliable. But the other thing I'm going to say again, and I've said it before in other videos, it's really important. It's not just about EGR and these, these plates, is everybody should have a DTC scanning and clearing device. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, watch the other videos. Go back through the videos. Just recently, in the last few weeks, I've put videos out you can search AutoFix3210 on my channel and you'll get the information, okay? So the reason we will mention that one is because Trevor is the Australian importer, AutoFix Australia, okay? We believe it's a quality product. It's not just some eBay special, okay? The device looks decent quality. We plugged it in and removed them to a number of cars to see what they're like and using the apps and practice using those. They are simple to you know, simple to plug in, download the app, it works together, they're designed to work together. It's not just some random, you know, um, thing that plugs in that's a few bucks off eBay that might damage the pins on the plug and some software that may or may not work. It's designed, to, they work together, okay? So we like that. Um, as I've said in the other video, the old scan, they're getting a bit old, they're ugly. I don't want a big, ugly square scan gauge sitting on my dash or around the car in a pretty new modern vehicle. You know, the car's all nice and new and clean and neat and, you know, you're not turning it into a truck. I don't want an overhead console and I don't, you know what I mean? I don't want stuff all over the windscreen, just neat and clean. I want to see out the window for safety. We need to be able to see where we're going. So we're getting off topic. How to fix it. Exhaust gas recirculation, that's your problem. Now, every vehicle's different. The older vehicles, some of them you could just block a vacuum line, a lot of them you could just put a plate in, right? So what you need to do, you need to, you need to do some searching and do some homework. I haven't got those answers for you specifically for your vehicle, how to fix it. It's, you need to know, check the legalities, be aware of what may or may not be legal, that's up to you to figure out. Find out what you can do, um, but that's how to fix it. It's stop the exhaust gas recirculation flow right that's how to fix the soot the soot is caused by the exhaust gas recirculation flow um, if you've got a 1kd k on 4x4 or k on.com.au they're on ebay it's called k on 4x4 k a oh it's on the bench here look k a o n 4 x 4 k on 4x4 you probably can't see that can you see that no not quite anyway um 10 bucks it works it's reliable right We've got, we've got a video on YouTube, full detail EGR clean is what you search, right? You're going to find that. Watch it. It goes for an hour and 40 something minutes. I just saw it again the other day. Sit down, get yourself educated, watch that. There's some other information there. If you want to buy the injector kit, all the gaskets you need come with the injector kit. We've got a whole heap of stuff, everything you need. When you do the job, it's a comprehensive deal where you do the injectors, the seats, the pipes, all the gaskets, clean everything up, change the map filter, and every bits and pieces you need, including the videos on how to do it. Or not to convince you to do it, but so you understand the job. As I said before, pay peanuts, get monkeys. It's a specialist area job. You need to get the right people onto these jobs. Or watch the videos. We've got at least half a dozen videos, full length, detail, injector jobs, or in parts, one, two, three, four parts, two parts, three parts, lots of little tech tip bits and pieces. Do your homework, okay? The people that watch the videos and then do the job, 
are the ones that get it right. The ones that get the injectors and two days later they're in, boom, boom, just like that, pshum, magic wand, woo, boom, they're in. They're the ones that, you know, the text messages are coming through, the posts are popping up on Facebook pages, right? You've just got to slow down, okay? Slow down. This, you can probably put one of these in a 1KZ for people that are listening with a 1KZ engine. You can probably put that in, okay? I'm not saying it's legal, I'm telling you that's what it works, but people just block the vacuum on as well, right? So with that out of the picture, we've already said that's the seven mil works. We've already said the gasket stays stuck on the head. This goes over the top, the cooler goes over the top of that. Did I tell you why it can't block up? Because there's no oil there. It's just dry powder. It's gonna be like spray painted black, there it is. Right, I don't know if you can see that. It's only in 720p at the moment, but that'll do for this video, right? So it works, there it is. It can't block up, right? There's nothing there to block up. Look, there's no, no soot, nothing ever gonna fall off there. It's just, whew, right? Flow, redu flow reduction plate, five mil, works for some people. You can try it if you want. You buy a blank drill your own size hole if you like playing around, but you don't need to because we can show you. This is what works with a seven mil, it stays clean. Now, if you've got a blockage or a restriction or something not working, right? I'll just say six mil may or may not work for you but we know the seven mil works there it is seven mil it definitely works right so what was i going to say um we know the seven mil works if you in your ejr cooler if that's blocking up or if the butterfly the flaps are a bit sticking and stuff like that that's where and i've said this to people a bit lately so i don't know if i've said it in a video or not but we'll call it a maybe one in a hundred where someone puts in this plate you know the seven mil and sometimes sooner or later they get a p0400 which is a good code to have it just means a low ejr flow so you know you kind of smile as i've said before uh, most people know what i'm talking about they're watching going yeah you've told us this before when you're going to tell us something new well this is for the people that are new and hopefully i've included something in here again hit me in the comments if there's something that i've included in this one that you've watched the other ejr videos that i didn't mention this one here, it can't block up either, right? It's nowhere near any oil or anything, so the hole won't be blocking up, okay? So, I don't know what else I can tell you, right? That's it, that's our clean, it's, let's bring this one up here, right? You can see it's a different one, because that one's got a speck right in the middle there, right? Let's have a closer look. That's not, oh, they're all the same. Can you see that little speck there? And then you compare to this one, because, you know, photos, probably just selected a few photos off the phone and went print and obviously didn't have color ink at the time so because this is black and white but what i want to say is look look how similar they are right it works right it's not the same one because the evidence mark there right it's like a freckle right birthmark this one's birthmarks right there that hasn't got it right you can see this one the shaft's a bit dirtier at the bottom there you can see this one you can see the movement and there's a bit of a bit of a chunk there so like i said if you want to put a can of this gear through whatever or whatever other brand you like, I don't mind if it's clean like this. If it's clean, I don't mind. Before your oil change, I'll explain that. For years we used to use this stuff with the Subarus and some other cars, right? So this is made by, this is actually made by Bars Leaks uh, for Subaru and I think they also made it for Ford as well. Because there was some issues with, um, you know, whatever. A bit of carbon up there. And the way this stuff works is, it's been a while, can you see the dust on top? What we used to do you'd have your engine at full operating temperature again i'd recommend it before the oil change i'm not sure dealerships would always do it that way but warm it up um this is petrol engine now you got to understand if you use these directions that's petrol engine if you, you can use it in a diesel absolutely but not with these directions okay you could damage your engine so be very careful of that and that's where i'm going to tell you now that just because you've seen a few videos, don't think you know everything, you can still go and play with your car and have problems. So if you shouldn't be touching your vehicle, then take it to someone who does. Shoot me a text and say, hey, Ant, this is where I am. You know, I, I want to grab the injector kit or whatever. And if you've got someone in the area, or I'll grab the injector kit, I'll watch the videos because I, I think I might do it. And then we'll watch the videos and we'll decide whether you're going to do it or whether we're going to recommend you to someone or whether you're going to, you know, put your car on a truck and send it to Melbourne to get it done. No, you're not going to do that. There's people that want to do that. But let's not, we don't need to do that. We've got people around. East Coast is all covered. We've got Perth covered. So it's all good, right? Now, this stuff in a petrol engine, it works really well. It's awesome, right? And that's probably why there's such a product and they use it because it does work. Warm it up, I think it is. You take off your vacuum line. You spray in about half a can, all right, and you let it soak. You let it sit there, I don't know, 10 minutes or something. Probably says on the can, I can't remember. Shake well before use, that was the important part. Do it every 12,500K, that's Subaru's uh, service schedule. 
Yeah, we used to service and work on Subarus. Yeah, we used to own Subarus and all that. Anyway, um, after whatever it is, 10 minutes, I'd have to read it. I didn't get to it. Um, whatever it is, probably 10 minutes would be my guess. Um, you can you crank it over and it'll sort of purge it and push it out. The, veg, the vehicle will eventually start. Jeez, I should probably read this. Re, you read it. Don't trust me. I'm going from memory. Removes gum, burnish, hops in it. Let's go direction. Warm up the engine. Yeah, we said that's an ignition off. Remove convenient vacuum hose. Allow the engine to stand for five minutes. There you go. Uh, that's fine. Five minutes. Start the engine. There you go. So five minutes, they said. I said ten. Um, start the engine. Run fast and prevent stalling. Right, so basically you're going to let it sit for a while, you're going to start it up and it's going to blow a bit of smoke and feel a bit sick and all that sort of thing. And so you give it a little rev and blow that out and then while you've got, if you've got a helper's probably handy, you know, depends if you can control the throttle from the engine, which you can on the older Subarus and that. Um, but you might need a helper to do the throttle and just hold it on about 2,000 revs, you know, not rev it or anything, just hold it steady. As it drops down, they're going to have to give it gently a bit more gas. And if you feel it's going to stall, then stop spraying this. But you spray the balance of the can in um, while it's running. And then obviously after it's all done, what does it say? Balance of the can. I think it... Hang on. Here you go. Stop the engine when the can empties and let it stand for 10 minutes. That's where I got confused on 10 minutes. I've got a good memory. I've read this for years. Okay, so first half of the can, five minutes, then start it up. Spray the rest in and then let it stand for five or 10 minutes. Then you're going to restart the engine, rev it, purge any remaining stuff out, refit the vacuum hose, row test. Go and give it a good Italian tune-up after that. That is the time for your Italian tune-up after that. And then bring it back, change your oil because it's going to have stuff, as I said, washed out, blown past the rings and whatever. Contaminate it. You don't want to do that to your new oil. Okay. Do not do that in a diesel. Okay. It'll probably give directions. Caution. Combustible keep away. Let's see if it says anything about diesel. No, it doesn't. But there is a direction... I have seen it, so they've probably got it on their website telling you how to do it. And it basically says disconnect or do something to stop the engine from starting. You don't want the engine to start. And of course you want it all warmed up and you've got to spray it while you're cranking the engine. So it's a constant flow and you know what I mean? Something along those lines. But again, check the directions, don't trust me. How would I do it? Um, I On the diesels, the way I did it, I used to have the engine idling and just spray it in little bursts, right? And when you start, you know, just, you can spray a bit, you know, every engine's different. So I'm telling you, don't do this. Don't follow my, follow my what I'm telling you, don't do this on a diesel. Don't do this on a diesel. And follow the directions. It's their product, their directions, not mine, okay? But with this one, what I used to do with this one, what I used to do was I'd spray it. This is on my vehicles, okay? I'd spray it while it's idling and just ch -ch -ch in bursts and you'd hear a little bit of knocking going on. You know the compression's coming up. It's in there. It would help clean, okay? This is not going to wash. None of these products are going to wash out this big chunky mess from over there, right? Right? See all that, that goop over there? None of them are going to wash. This is going to take off what's on the surface like that. This is designed to clean the combustion chamber area, that sort of thing, spark plugs, deposits. When regularly done, it'll take the thin layer coating off. Do you understand what I mean? Even this stuff, you can't put something, it's just the fluid, right? You can't compress it. Then you've got what? It's going to release all that. Not going to happen. I hope you understand. I hope that's been helpful. I hope it saves someone from wrecking an engine, wasting money on products like this to try and clean stuff like that. You need to watch the videos if you want to clean like that. We can't do videos on every make and model because you aren't watching enough videos. We need to get some money back out of this YouTube channel if we're going to go to other vehicles and show you how to clean those intakes. So start watching them longer. Watch the ads longer. Share them to your friends. Share them around. Give it the thumbs up. You know, put a comment there. Get people involved. Let's get it busy. Let's get it happening and we'll show you some stuff on some other vehicles. All right, guys, on that note, thanks for watching. I'll remind you again. Thumbs up. And catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching. See ya.